Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cloud brush or any type of brush. We can create a brush of this entire skyscape or we can cut out just one cloud. So with the lasso tool, L for shortcut, I'm going to select one of these clouds and duplicate it from this background with command J. Next, I'm going to trim directly around the image with image trim. And from our adjustment layers, I'm going to add a gradient map. We want this to be from white to black. If it's not, you can do the reverse. We do want the cloud to be black for this. Next, I'm going to adjust the stops so that the background is completely white. We do not want to see the cutout part. If you're doing a brush that looks okay with some of that mid-tones, then that's just fine. We go back to layers and I'm going to select both the gradient and this layer and duplicate it again with either command J or drag into this plus sign to work in a non-destructive manner. We can adjust this later if we need to. I'm going to merge the layers with command E and now we're going to go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and name this whatever you'd like. You will see a number right here. That is the size of the brush in pixels. So if you are using this brush on a high resolution, you do want to make sure that your brush is created for something like that at a much larger scale. So here is our new cloud brush. And you can see there's our cloud. And you may want to change shape dynamics and adjust the size if you want to do create a little bit more of a dynamic brush. You probably don't want angle jitter on at this time. And you can also change the scattering and the count. So let's say we want five clouds painted and this is going to scatter in both X and Y axes. You can also use color dynamics for your full foreground and background colors if you wanted to change those. Let's pick something a little bit more visible. Okay. So you can see with each brush, we are getting some variations of the colors. Another note for under the dynamics is if you are using this brush with the tablet and pen, you can adjust these brushes to be based on the pen pressure. You can also create brushes for, let's say, your signature. So I've already cut out the background of the signature. I'm just going to go to edit. Define brush preset. I'm going to create another brush using an image like this. And if it doesn't go to black and white automatically, you can select black and white. And you can give it more contrast, or if you like the mid-tone grays whenever you're painting. If you're using this as more of a textural brush and you want to cover the entire area, this is going to be fine with the edges. Otherwise, you may want to soften and fade it out. Let's go with this. And we do need to merge this before we save it. Okay, so this brush is huge. This brush is 4,500 pixels, and our image is only 1920. So if I decrease my brush size using the left bracket, you'll see we've got a box. We may not want that. 
as our brush. However, if we are filling the entire canvas, then that's pretty cool. And as long as you are on your main move tool, you can hold down shift and your plus and minus to go through filter effects. So this could be a really cool effect depending on what you want to achieve. I'm going to make one more brush with these birds. I'm going to duplicate the image. And in this case, I do not want the clouds within the brush. So I'm going to tap W for the wand tool, select subject, and I'm going to create a mask. There is a little piece of the image here. I didn't get masked. and create our gradient map. We do want the birds to be black. So I'm gonna reverse this time. And that's looking pretty good. If I do an image, image size, you'll be able to see what the size of this brush would be. So 807 pixels is gonna be the width. If you wanna make an even number, that's fine. And we need to merge the layers. So for our color, I'm going to change it to black. And there we have some birds. Or if you use your scatter brush technique, you can create mini birds. And you can see here in this preview how far apart your brush stroke is going to be. And if you want it to go on both axes. All right, let's see what this does. So I can paint all sorts of birds. I'm going to do one more creating a liquid brush and I've saved a few images from unsplash.com which is another free image website. All right, let's go with this one. And again, depending on how much middle tone you want, this is pretty nice with the subtle smoke. However, we do want to make sure all the background is removed in my particular case. So the smoke is black, which is what we want. And the image size is huge. So let's put this down to 800 pixels before we save our brush preset. Something you may want to do in this case would be to make sure this is blended out so we don't have a chopped edge. Let's say we've created our set of brushes that we want to save and we can continue using them on this computer or if we want to move them to another computer or send them to someone, you may want to export them. So you can group them in a folder like this. However, if you export them that way in a folder, you're going to get a folder within a folder, which may not be what you want to do. So with the brushes selected, Go to your flyout menu in the brushes panel and go to export selected brushes. And 
and this is going to be the name of the folder that's imported. So let's say these have no hyphens. I saved a previous one. It is a .abr file and it automatically saves within Adobe Photoshop application and your presets and brushes folder. So now that I've done that, I'm going to import, let's say we're on another computer and we go to the flyout, we're going to import brushes and select. You can see in the file size that the size of the brushes um, do take up quite a bit of space depending on the resolution and dimensions. So here is our new folder of brushes. If this video helped you out, please like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching.